Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of the Dark Table from A to Z series. My name is Hal and today we're going to discuss the import module in Light Table and do a small introduction to the shortcuts that you can use in Dark Table in general. Now before we start with the module in itself, the import module, we're going to have a look at the preferences where you have in the import tab you have the session options that will control the import module. Here we have four settings that we can change. First is the base directory. That's where all of the new directories that Darktable will automatically create for you when you import pictures will be located. For me it's the pictures folder and by default that is just under my directory on Linux. You can add anything you want here. There is a list of variables that you can choose, like this one is a variable when it starts with the dollar, but you can as well type in fixed values that will always be used, like I could add here dark table, for instance, and then everything is going to be saved under my picture directory and then dark table. I could even call it raw photography tutorials, and so on and so forth, you get the gist. The next one is the subdirectory naming pattern. That's the name of the directory that dark table will create for every import session. So every time you import when using the copy and import, but we'll discuss that in a bit, when you copy photos from say your card or from another directory, Darktable will create a new directory under the base directory. And this subdirectory has a naming pattern here. These variables are self-explanatory, but we'll go through them. First you have the year, the month, and the day. That's the year, month, and day of the day that you're importing, not when you made the photos, but when you're importing them. You can change that the, to become the date of the photos. All of those variables can be found in the user manual, and I'll put a link as usual to it in the description. But if we wanted, as an example, to change this to the year that the photo was made, the variable is called exif underscore year and that is take the year from the exif in the photo. Month and day are named similarly exif month and exif day if you so wish to call your directory subdirectory. And here you have the job code. The job code is a variable that you define yourself. Uh, usually I would put a description that's quite clear that defines where the, the, the photos were made or with whom. And then you have here keep the original file names, which means that one, while copying, Darktable will leave the original file names that were created by the camera. Or if you deselect it, you can use the file naming pattern to create a new file name for every file that you copy, for every photo that you copy. And here, as you can see, you'll get year, month, day as usual, and then a sequence, and then a file extension. The file extension will be dependent on the actual files that you're copying. So it will keep the file extension of the original files. You can as well add the job code here if you'd like to add it in the file name. I usually do that as well. So here is my folder structure. As you can see, under home raw photography pictures that's on Linux it will be different on Mac and a Windows machine but it will be similar that's where I have all of my photo folders those were not named by Darktable because as you could see Darktable would have added the day and year and the whole date I just created those manually but today we're going to try both versions. So here I have a new 
folder that I've just created. I called it import. It has one photo in it that I copied and we have another photo that's in downloads. So if I go back to Darktable, I'm going to use first the add to library and add to library just adds the pictures in a folder without moving them. So if I go to import the one that I created which is not in my collection yet you can see there is one and it's automatically selected and if I click add to library import subdirectory will automatically appear in my collection now and here's the photo that's in it the actual directory and photo are not moved they remain where they are however if I use the copy and import now I get the job name that will be used in the renaming as we've seen in the preferences you can have use here recursive directory it will just go through them if you had multiple subdirectories and you can ignore JPEG images I'm going to call this one import 2 and as you can see you have here the naming rules which are exactly the same as we so in the preferences you got the chance to override today's date if you want to enter it manually this way instead of actually putting today's date it will put in that date if you've you know that you've made the photos on another date you can just do that yourself here you can keep this window open so it doesn't automatically close at the end of the job I'm gonna leave it like this and now I'm going to say copy and import but first I'm gonna select the correct place which was in my home and then downloads and then this photo and then copy and import and now as you can see I have a new collection but this one has been created by Darktable according to the naming convention that we defined which was the date so you've got the year the month and the day and then the job code that I entered myself now if I go back to my folder structure I'll see that under pictures dark table created a new subdirectory like we've discussed and copied that photo from downloads to it so it was a copy it doesn't delete it but it moves well, doesn't move it it creates a new copy in the folder structure that you defined if you've actually connected your camera or if you're using a uh, memory card reader that's connected to your computer when you have copy and import you will have a extra section here in places that will show you the camera or the memory card reader and then you can copy from that directly to your picture folder next we have some parameters that we can use while adding to library or copying and importing the first one is to ignore the EXIF rating if there is a rating that's already embedded in the EXIF of the photo clicking this will ignore it and reset the rating of all images to this value that we define here apply metadata will just override the metadata from the photo with whatever you define here so you can add a title description creator publisher so on and so forth and will allow you as well to add tags directly to the photos if you so wish that's it for the import module let's have a quick look at the keyboard shortcuts that you can use in Darktable now you can find a list of the defined shortcuts and actually change them in the preferences I realized that the request in the one of the comments on the previous videos for shortcuts was probably for me to 
say which, which shortcuts I'm using while presenting videos, especially in the showcase sessions. However, I don't use that many shortcuts. M maybe that's something I should change. Anyway, we have four categories, global, which is probably the one that I use the most. You have the major ones, which is the dark room and light table views, which are DNL, the map view M, and the print view P. Control Q is to quit. Another one that I use often is the focus and the full screen. We can show it here. Control Shift F, and then you can see focus and F for full screen. The next category is processing modules, which is a list of all of the shortcuts that you can define in every module. Let's take a one as an example. Notice that none of them are defined by default. Maybe that's why I don't use them. I don't know. If you find yourself that you're in need of shortcuts for some specific module, then you can enable them here. And you can see all the actual functions that you can use. The easy ones, enable, focus module, and then load presets, and so on and so forth. But you have to do it yourself. Decrease, edit, increase. I'm not so sure what the big advantage would be, unless you have problem using the mouse, which then, of course, that would be understandable if you want to create shortcuts for everything and avoid using the mouse as much as possible. But otherwise, it's really not for me. I don't know if I would ever find them really useful. But I'm happy to be proven wrong. If you have any examples of where those shortcuts would be useful, then please add them in the comments below. The next category or section is for the utility modules and it's the same as the previous one just for those modules for instance do we have an import here yeah here is the import and here you can select or define shortcuts for the stuff that we were using in the module notice that copy and import already have one didn't know that that could be handy. Control Shift I is comp copy and import, but you can define ones for all of the other functions. And the last one is for views. And these are general ones that you can define in each of the views. Now here is one that I generally use that uh, forget to mention which is the A button and this one allows you to pan and zoom on the photo when you have masks on otherwise if you try to zoom then you will be affecting the mask if you press A while zooming or panning with the mouse then you would be working on the photo again and leave the masks alone that one is quite handy However, I'm still not sure about which ones would be handy and which ones wouldn't. Like I said, I don't use them very much, but there's the height, the histogram. Maybe cycle histogram modes is handy because I do do that a few times every time I'm editing a photo. So that's one to define. It is not a bad idea, I think, that uh, to go through those and see which ones would work for you and which ones won't. I'm definitely going to be doing that and maybe then I will start mentioning those in the uh, showcase sessions while we're editing photos. That would be helpful. That's it for this video. I hope that you found it interesting. If you have any questions, remarks or corrections, please leave them in the comments below and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.